I think I'm in a 49 Merc. Just kind of a really small one. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dennis Gage, and welcome to My Classic Car. Well, this week we're in Maricopa, Arizona at Ernie Adams Dwarf Car Museum. This is a pretty amazing place, and Ernie is a pretty amazing guy. He built his first dwarf car back in 1965 out of something like nine refrigerators, and built more since then than he could probably even tell you. But about 25 years ago, he started building street-legal dwarf cars. Have a good day, guys. These things are really incredible, not to mention really cool. Let's get around and check these things out. Ernie, it is great to meet you finally. Well, it's nice meeting you. <laughs> Man, I have, uh, I've heard about you, uh, actually from your, your buddy, Gene Tweedy, who I met uh, at the Old Mary's car show in Ottawa, Kansas, and he had his 54 Chevy dwarf. I'd never even heard of a dwarf car before, and I went, man, this thing's so cool. And he goes, oh, well, yeah, but you know, the guy that, the real dwarf car guy is Ernie Adams out in, out in Arizona. You know, he's the, he's the guy. And, and so I started looking into you, and. In fact, you are the guy. <laughs> you are the dwarf car guy. So you did your first dwarf car back in 1965? Yes, 1965. And so I built that out of nine refrigerators. <laughs> you know, I, and when you look at that car, I mean, I think it looks great, but when you look at it and you, t and you told me that, then I can start to see the refrigerators. Yeah. You know, because the, the, in fact, the back curve is, is the that refrigerator, is the top right? of the refrigerator. Then you started doing actually dwarf race cars, right? Yeah, that's, uh, that's where the dwarf race cars got their start off of that car. The wheelbase and everything came off mm -hmm. of that refrigerator car. But then you really, so. you really stepped it up and you made just some beautiful cars here. I mean, this 49 Merc, chop Merc no less. No, but it's, it's not, not chopped, chopped, I guess. It just, it just looks chopped because it's so little, right? Yeah, when you shrink it, the bottom is so big on them Mercury's, but when you shrink them down, the window shows it more than the bulk of the body does. Now, these aren't refrigerators, are they? No, this, is, <laughs> this was all new metal on here. And that, that's the other thing. I mean, you don't start with a regular car and take pieces out and all this. Everything here, you've created. The body and the frame and the suspension is all homemade right here in my shop. So you're just starting with flat steel. Yeah. You got an English wheel? Yeah, I got a homemade English wheel. I got a, two homemade bead rollers, one to put the body prints in and one to put the, to make the stainless with. Actually, this little shed we're standing in front of was the original shop. That was where the dwarf cars all started, right like there. Like under that awning? Yeah. Because yeah, there wasn't room, room inside. To, yeah, I didn't, that's only <laughs> nine by 13. <laughs> Even when it comes to the interior, you do, you do everything inside the car too, right? Yes, the, the dash in this car was built from a refrigerator door. Now the chrome trim here is all made out of uh, conduit. Formed and then you have it chromed. Yeah, and we make all the knobs and everything on a lathe. <laughs> now, you got a little red button there. What's, what's that? This little button yeah. is a flamethrower. This thing is a flamethrower too? Yes. So unburnt fuel travels back, woof, and yeah. then she's back up front. Yes. The doors are surprisingly heavy too, and they close. So nice. Um, so nice. Yeah. Your fit and finish is better than a yeah. lot of new cars. How about your back glass? There's a little curve to that. The curved glass is cut out of a 66 Chevy pickup windshield. This was out of an old railroad truck, so it was kind of messed up when I made it. To begin with, right. How about yeah. your taillight bezels? You make the, those too? The taillights is all homemade. It's got a 50 Chevy lens. Oh, okay. And the running gear that you use on all your dwarf cars is all Toyota, isn't it? So real reliable, real easy to service but the rest of it is all homemade, the suspension and everything. We use the Toyota springs, we just cut them and recoil them, use uh -huh. the Toyota bushings and everything. Can we look at the engine? Yeah. How about the spots, do they need to move? Nope. Oh, really? They're okay. Oh, you really got it figured out. Well, that, by golly, that's a Toyota engine. That's a, a 4KC Toyota engine, 1290cc. I don't know really what the horsepower is on it. But plenty for this. <laughs> yeah, plenty, plenty for these cars, yeah. These cars weigh about 1,800 pounds. That's really? about 1,000 pounds less than the real car, uh -huh. the real Toyota. These are all licensed, they all run, and you can take them out on the streets. Can we take it out for a drive? Sure. And I've never it. driven a dwarf car. Yeah. Could I drive this well, thing? Well, it just drives just like a 49 Mercury. Just little, huh? Yeah. Close her up. Let's do this thing. Okay.
You know, you don't realize how little these are. Come up alongside a Ram pickup, it looks like a Mack truck. Yeah. <laughs> You gotta be the most popular guy at any show you go to. I do pretty good. I guess what strikes me is how how well this drives. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like a family car. Shifts so smoothly, but then it, it's a Toyota transmission. It's all matching. So it was, it was built to work together. And this thing's got to get close to what 30 miles a gallon or something like that. 31. <laughs> You know, you could you could drive this thing for a long distance. It, oh, it's yeah. pretty comfortable. Yeah. When did you start building? Were you just a kid when you? Oh, I built wooden cars when I was a kid. Did you ever put a motor on any of them? Oh yeah, yeah. My mother bought our home place in 1944, and at that time they were taking washing machine motors off, gas motors, and putting yeah. electric ones on. So I'd bring them old motors home and make them run and put them on wagons and tricycles <laughs> and bicycles. Then I started making my own carts to put them on. Like in the early, early ones, were they all chain drive? Because it was just a sprocket yeah. and a chain and then yeah. you... Yeah. Well, chain or belt. Uh-huh. That's pretty cool, Ernie. What do you say we uh, check out the uh, 40 Merc, though? Sounds good to me. All right, man. Let's do it. Ready to run. Well, you know, Ernie, uh, I've had a lot of automotive experiences, but your Dwarf Merc was a new one for me. Yeah. <laughs> it drives amazingly well. Yeah. There, you, you really, you yeah. got these down. Now this, this is a 40 Merc, right? 1940, but chopped this, top. I was gonna say, this does look like it was chopped, even, yeah. you know, even, it, even though it's dwarfed, so your original model was already a chopped yes. Merc. It was chopped three inches in the front and four inches in the rear. Everything here again, hand formed. Everything. It, all yeah. metal, all hand Headlight formed. Headlight bezels, uh, all the nose part, the grill, stainless. How many pieces are in the hood? Because there's a, uh, I mean, the thing comes clear down here, it comes around there's there. There's two halves. Okay, so yeah. it's, it's welded together here? Yeah. And then the, it, all the grill bars? All the grill bars. Everything. I made a jig on the table and I make all the grill bars the same length first, so they all got the same bend. Okay. And then I cut them shorter as I use them. My goodness. All these are bent just like the original car and the bumpers uh, got the swoop down here just like the original car. Yeah, I mean, you, the detail, you just don't miss anything. I mean, every detail that's in the original is in your dwarf car. Yeah, this car has uh, air conditioning. This car and, has actually has air conditioning? Yes, and electric quarter windows. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of pretty color too, uh, candy apple. This is candy brandy wine. Candy brandy wine, man. Now, how about the running boards? Do, you know, they're they're just homemade. Is the floor actually lower than that running board though? Yeah, the floor is four inches down from that inside. And that's what gives you the. Because I was surprised how much headroom there was in these tiny little cars, but that's because the floor is so low. Yeah, and and being this one was a chop top, I set the seats down lower. But then I had to raise them back up an inch and a half. So you could see? <laughs> so you could see. <laughs> Can I open right, it up? Probably, yeah. Because this one's got, I mean, it's pretty fancy interior in this one. You know, it's kind of mohair and, and uh, your dash again is a, I mean, it's a 40 Merc dash basically, yeah, right? Yeah, I had a 40 Merc dash laying on the table and I got to photograph it and make it all exactly like it was. It's, it's got the full glove box and everything. <laughs> Even with the air conditioning, I had room for a glove box. Uh -huh. And I made all the knobs and made the steering wheel. The speedometer is out of a Dodge, so it's got the green turn signal. Right, and then again, just like all of them, you make the bezels for Yeah, the... I make the whole tail light, not just the bezels. The lens is cut out of the Toyota donor car. <laughs> <laughs> make all the stainless door handles, yeah, and bumpers. I, you made the skirts, of, of course. I made the skirts. So, same thing here, it's a Toyota powered and drivetrain and everything? Like, yeah, like the... everything's Toyota as far as the drivetrain and the suspension. Can we look at this one too? Yeah, we, we can look at it. Uh, very nice operating the way it comes up. Oh yeah. And the, the springs to hold it up are designed just like the original Mercury. The air conditioning out here is factory with the motor. You have just got it all figured out. I had so much fun in the 49, can I drive the 40? You sure can. Hot dog, let's do it.
This is different. This is different, Ernie. <laughs> yeah, it's different. All right. You're looking up more and through a littler yeah. windshield, I think. But this actually has better visibility than a full-size chopped 40 Mark. The visibility is pretty good. They got a beautiful front end on them. Oh, they do. Yeah. Yes. I've always loved this car. And I think the candy brandy wine paint color you went with is perfect for this car, too. Well, kids told me I had to paint one red instead of green and blue like I like, <laughs> you know. I'm a green car guy, so, you know, I'm, I'm with you. But red looks good on this. I've never seen anything, though, that was scratch built that was better built than what you do. I've never seen anything like it. Well, they don't seem like homemade cars. They should sure riding in them. They're not junky sounding, you know. Well, the doors alone weigh a ton. I mean, these things are solid. Well, this one drives every bit as good as the 49. Every bit as good. Maybe even better. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, they're both so good. I can't decide. But we've got we got two down and one to go. All right. The 39 Chev? Sounds good to me. We're heading back. We're going to do it. Well, you know, uh, Ernie, I don't know which one I like better. <laughs> that 40 is pretty nice. <laughs> You're going by the looks or the way they drive? Well, a little of both. <laughs> That's why I can't decide. But this is this was kind of what started it. This was your first street that's legal. A, yeah, that's your first right? street legal. So yeah. this is a 39 Chevy. Chevy. And you yeah. built this one in? 88. 92 I built it. So a four year. You definitely stepped it up. You decided you're going to put this thing on the street. You're going to do the whole thing, right? Yeah, it was quite a learning curve, but but I studied pictures real close and and I had made a bead roller for to put the print in the dwarf race car, so I also used that to put the print in the body here. Right. Just made another set of dies and the headlight buckets I made a jig to make the headlight buckets with and inside is a tractor headlight uh -huh. with the back cut out so I could adjust it. It's had three point oh, adjustment. Right, right. How about your little the, the turn park signals lights, or park lights? Uh, I found a pair of them, they were all rotted, but I used the bezel and the glass. And I'm sure you made the visor. Yeah, the visor's all homemade. It's a, kind of a copy of a Fulton, three piece, so right. it can be adjusted. What are the seats? I mean, do you make the seats too? Well, the seats in this case are Toyota bucket seats. I cut them down smaller. I figured how much room it took me to sit on and then cut the rest of it off so you got room to get your feet in. I love your uh, self like body by Adams. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it says dwarf body by Adams. Dwarf body by Adams. And the bustle trunk, how'd yeah, you form that? Yeah, here? everybody asked me how I formed this curve like this, but that was real simple. This quarter panel comes from the door yeah. all the way back around to here. Yeah. And it's it's welded to the body right here. Yeah. And right in the middle of this curve. So it's just a slight oh, bit okay. either way. Well, you know your your seams that you just can't and see. And there's these hinges are homemade. Gosh. They got everything to travel with in the trunk, you know, uh, spare tire, jack and a wheel wrench in all the cars. Now these, this would be different because th this would have a butterfly hood, is that right? It's got a butterfly look hood. At this. Yeah, Let's you look wanna... at that. Now the hood opens just like the original car. It's a uh, butterfly opening. The car you... body was built right around the motor. I'll but say. I've had the motor out of here and put another motor in it. Can you take it out the top or does it go out the bottom? It comes out the top without taking the grill off even. Wow. How about the hinge? Did you make the hinge for that? or? You, you... Yeah, the hinge is all homemade for that. <laughs> You couldn't even steal one from a piano and, and be satisfied, could you? No. You had to make your own. <laughs> well, we're you know we're two for two so far. What do you say we take this one out? And you got okay. the, you got the full size of this too, yeah, right? Yeah, we can we can drive them both. Hot dog, well let's do it. So this was like this 24 years ago you built this. Yeah, that's amazing. And where all have you driven? I drove to Des Moines, Iowa, first trip out of town. Man. This little bugger's got pretty good snap to it too, and it's uh, I could tell that, yeah. out on the highway, 65 to 85. It'd get right up and go. My neighbor and I, we held it wide open for about 10 miles on Interstate 40, and it would not go 100. 99, just the best it would turn do. Turn close to it, but yeah. not quite 100. Yeah, but this one's always had just a little bit of left pull. Other than that, you can run 80 miles an hour and take your hands off the steering wheel, any one of them. So when you're driving like on an interstate or something, do I, I mean, are people just driving by you and, and videotaping the car with their phones and all this stuff? If you pull in to get gas, you got a car show. <laughs> so this is the only one of these that you've got the full size yeah. version of, right? Yeah. 
these just drive so amazingly well. I just get such a kick out of it. <laughs> So until our next meeting, remember, honor the timeless classics. I'm Dennis Gage in a dwarf car. Happy motoring.